What up with you guys, you know who it is. It's your boy, John Mike. Today, I wanna to talk about stuff that I actually use. And today, I wanna to talk about my Personas Fader Port 8. This is an amazing production controller. Uh, that's what they call it, but it is a control surface. It's MIDI operated, lets me control. Uh, Studio One works perfectly with that. It's, it works with other DAWs, but it's meant to complement the workflow that happens inside of Studio One. So uh, it's really, really cool, really, really dope. Uh, so I wanna show you guys how I actually use it. So obviously uh, they have multiple versions. Of this. They have the 16 channel, they have the eight channel, and they have the one channel one uh honestly i probably could just get by with just the one channel but it does help to have like eight full faders so for those of you who are kind of debating about should i buy the one that just the one fader thing or should i buy uh the full faders or the 16 faders it really depends on your workflow it is helpful to have this uh honestly be, this thing has a ton of features i'm not going to spend there's a lot of videos that talk about the features, the main features of it. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about and rehashing stuff that you can go and watch in other videos about what you can and cannot do. What I'm gonna share with you is how I actually use it and the things that are most beneficial to me in my workflow. So the things that are most important to me, of course, are uh, the faders and having the faders and being able to reach and grab a fader and turn it up and down really, really quick. And it you know, corresponds to the DAW, vice versa. If I turn up a fader in the DAW, it automatically moves on the control surface transport control is really really important to me uh, also like if I select you know multiple tracks say if I select these and I move they all move together you know what I'm saying and land at their their places that they need to land I use that quite often especially when like mixing like drums uh, and doing things like that sometimes I want to turn the whole kit up or turn up a group of background vocals or something to that nature, you know what I'm saying? So it's always helpful uh, to be able to do that. So one of the other most important things, and I'll kind of move in here so you can see it, is reading and writing automation. These are probably the two most important buttons on this thing for me, uh, because honestly, I bought this thing for writing automation. Yes, I do have the touchscreen, you know, Raven thing or whatever, where I can, you know, reach and touch the screen and do automation that way. But I would much rather just uh, do it with a physical fader. It's much quicker, much more tactile. You get a little bit more nuance in your uh, feels of it and stuff like that. Uh, so these two uh, buttons are probably my most more, most important use buttons on here. And it's also really, really cool that you have you can actually see and i'll try to get in there so you can see it but you can actually see the track names in this window and you can also see the pan where you got it pan and being able to bank through them and it moves you know with your tracks and banks with that you know what i'm saying so this is really really helpful uh for me because i work with large track counts when i'm mixing uh, usually upwards of 80 to 120 tracks are a typical mix for me. So having something that I can quickly kind of bank back and forth between tracks uh, and get in and get out and do what I need to do, this makes it really, really cool. It also is very helpful during a session because I have a arm record arm button here. And so I can easily just hit here and arm a group of tracks, you know what I'm saying, uh, and do some things like that. Uh, that's helpful when recording. Uh, moving from track to track, uh, being able to do that. It can do a whole lot of things uh, in controlling Studio One and doing all of those things like that. But mainly for me, it's about a handful of features that I really, really need that are really, really valuable to me uh, in this versus, um, you know, trying to use this as my all in one thing. One thing that's really, really cool is there's a bus button right here. I use this quite often, which gives me like all of my buses because when I line up my tracks, I line them up and I mix from the buses. And if you really mix, you know what I'm talking about. You mix from your buses. So having a dedicated button here that I can just hit bus and now I have all of my main buses and I can move and mix those. Uh, and then if I wanna go macro and get into the track level, I can hit all and then I can bank through all of my different tracks to get to that one kick or snare. This is where this is valuable to me, um, a little bit more valuable than this. So it becomes a, a workflow. Yes, I can touch the screen and do things with that. Uh, yes, I can, um, you know, click with the mouse. But sometimes you just need that very fast kind of workflow with doing that. Things I don't like about it is that I feel like it is sometimes too feature heavy. 
and I feel like I don't really use it to its capacity of what uh, it could be used for because honestly, automation, transport, and just grabbing a fader real quick is really what I like doing. Like something as simple as panning because like I got a pan knob right here that I can just, you know, hit and pan whatever track I'm selected on. So if I can hit this and I can actually control the panning, you know, on that particular track uh, with that button, you would think that, hey, that's the way to do it. But sometimes it's just quicker to me uh, to just click with the mouse to just reach up here and just pan like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's faster. It takes like two seconds to do like that. Whereas on here, I got to kind of jump over here. I got to, uh, you know, bank to the track that I'm trying to get to and hit this. And then I got to pan. You know, I could do that literally like swipe. Oh, there it is. Boom. Pan. It's just quicker. It's just quicker for me when I do it like that. So I prefer clicking on some things. I'm just a little old school, but you could do a whole lot of other things. You can control your plugins. You can do all kind of other sorts of crazy things with this. You can literally control all of Studio One or any DAW for that matter, Pro Tools, um, Logic, whatever. It works with HUI mode. So you can control any DAW with this. I just um, uh, prefer to use it for what I use it for. And that's what most things, and that's what I wanna do in this series. I wanna talk about things that I actually use and how I actually use them and how they're beneficial uh, to me as a producer, as a musician, uh, as a thing like that. So hope this video helped you. That's all I wanted to share with you. If you're interested in this and this blesses you and, you, and you're excited about it after watching this video and it helped you decide on whether or not to purchase it, Check out that affiliate link down below, helps out the channel. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra. You just click on it, it takes you to a page, you buy it, it, you get it, you get the product. It gives the channel a little kickback so I can help keep moving things, keep the, keep the lights on, all that stuff like that. So I hope this video helped you. I hope it blessed you. I hope it gave you something to think about. Uh, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the share button, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about it. And I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Uh, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm out. Holla at you boy.